conversation. Yes, we better not talk about that, Jeff. Good morning, <laughs> boys and girls. Uh, what's going on out there today? Hope everyone's having a great Sunday morning, St. Patty's Day. Everyone be careful out there for all the uh, the insanity that's about to ensue. Um, good Lord. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys are having a great start to your day. Beautiful morning here. Beautiful start to the day here in Southern California desert. We've had unusual rain, Jeff, and sort of cooler weather mm -hmm. for the BNP all the last couple of weeks, but yeah. It's fine. And hey, how about how about last night? I mean, first of all, first of all, watching uh, Carlos and and, and and Yannick, I mean, it's just that's a that's that's the new level. Yeah. And and anything and anything like from you know, Roger and those guys, not I'm just saying that it's a it's a different day. They've just yeah. taken the game without changing the dimensions. Okay, maybe the racket's <clears throat> a little bit different. The string's a little bit different. Training's different. And just morning, Rich. Morning, Rich. Um, but they've just – they're it, it's just fascinating to me to see how the game goes to these, how it morphs to a new level. And yeah. to think that you can hit the ball that hard that often – and cover the court just blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and then to, and then to think, well, okay, after that, everyone's just kind of going, Oh my God. I mean, just taking a deep breath after that one. And then you got Tommy Paul out there, as we were talking about before we went live, and just going, I really hope, I hope he wins this because I, I will I will stop everything I'm doing. I'm sorry, whatever, if I'm on the court. I'm not even recorded. I'm not going to record. I just want to go. I'm done. Thank you very much. We're going to go watch Carlito and Tommy. Yeah. Just athletic, the new level. Yeah. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, phenomenal watching. Yeah, watching the level of play. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, not to be controversial or anything, but I think that's where um, – the window has closed, I think, for a few of the guys that are, you know, in the, on the fringe of top 10 and just out of the top 10. I think since he, since he passed, it's going to be the bridesmaid. I, I don't see him getting a grand slam. I don't see him having to, um, I, I think these other, these guys coming up, like who are, who are, have already chased him and now surpassed him in development in, and, and, you know, i I don't think since he bad, a bad player by any stretch of the imagination, the guy has it. But these guys have something else. These guys have something else going on. They seem to be able to. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Athletically, um, they're they solve problems as well. Um, so there's a few guys out there. I, I think team is done. I think you know um, it's unfortunate because it's an injury. Um, and, and a few other guys, I think, I think those train has left the station. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think if you're, if you're just a big ball basher, um, you've, you've just, all you've done is really put yourself deep into a commodity style of play. And, right. and you're right, Jeff. I think, I think those days are done. Who knows? Maybe not, but who knows? And, I, mean, and, who, I mean, you can never t can tell. I mean, things open up, you know, somebody beats somebody and now you've got, uh, you know, a window of opportunity to get you into the semi, you know, it's no, yeah. no different than hunting a gold ball. Right. I mean, you got to keep showing up and there you go. sometimes you go. wins at your back and something opens up and there you are. Yeah. However, I mean, I, I, you, you know, know, some of might argue that center is just a baseliner, but I would say, um, I would say that I'll bet you within the next year or two that they're going to add a serve volley to the mix, if nothing else, just to keep the guys returning off balance a little bit. Yeah. But um, I mean, we saw that one point last night where he and and Carlos are both up in net trying to you know out angle oh. each other back cross court. That was like, just that was like unbelievable. Like, you, how is that geometrically possible? Okay, I right. guess it is. I, so, I think the other thing too that's just like off the chart is how fast Sinner is for being that tall. Yeah. Unbelievable athleticism. Yeah. Like, and look, hats off to Medvedev, who um, clearly is a baseliner. Um, and he had some amazing returns, Tommy playing serve and volley, and, and the guys, you know, 
down in the, in the other zip code, just yeah. ripping winners. It's, it's amazing. So, but I still think, I mean, like we're going to watch in today's episode, Jeff, you have to look at the big picture. If you're going to serve and volley, if you're going to chip and charge, if you're going to play an approach shot and come on in, you just can't measure how you're doing point by point. You've really got to look at what's the big picture here. And to me, if you, I mean, Mr. Stowe always told me in, in so many words, look, what do you care if you win six out of 10 of those points, seven out of 10 of those points, what do you care if you lose a few? Right. And that was always the biggest challenge of me when I was working with juniors who would, and I would, and I would sort of encourage them that this is something you got to have in your game. And, you know, they would get past one time yeah, and shrink into this. Well, this doesn't work. And, and, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, they got some girly over there. They're worried about, oh, my God, my girl's now going to go for the baseball guys, not the tennis guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was just, yeah, I was really looking forward to a Tommy Paul. But I'm sure we're going to see it. I think Tommy's in the mix. I think he's going to yeah. be up yeah. there. And you know Brad Stein is coach really well. And, yeah. and I mean, you, you guys from the same team at Fresno State, is that right? Yeah, we played together at uh, Kenyatta. Uh, oh, Kenyatta, Anderson, okay. And then we both we were both uh, back east playing the national amateur circuit uh, when we when we were both we both signed at the same time to go to Fresno State. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, heck of a player. He was and good guy, just super yeah. guy. So, um, all right. Well, let us get into today's episode of What's the Right Shot. And uh, this is interesting because. What we're going to look at today is is obviously I have volley, and we're going to work on a couple of things to try to simplify this part of it. But we're also going to look at the reality of of this right here. <laughs> of uh, might be good to have some mental skills attached with your serve and half volley, and then dealing with reality, guys. If you haven't checked out yeah. this course yet. Uh, I, I invite you to do so when we're done today down below in the description area. There's a link that will take you to the five mindset skills that I trained over the last 18 months um, made a slight difference, Jeff, in uh, some results. Both a slight, singles, little height, just a slight little tiny. Hmm, anyway, hmm. Um, <laughs> so look, here we go. Um, Half volley. And and let's talk a little bit about half volley. I mean, mentally for me, Jeff, I'm just thinking of this is not really a stroke. This is more about can I present the ball with a a, a mini moving backboard? Yeah. And and when I say moving, I want to make sure that I'm I'm pushing against it with some body weight. And and then the mindset here is that is all I want to really think about doing is just like I talked about the other day, ice hockey made that, made, made that similarity. All we're doing is throwing the puck into the corner. And, right. and right. when, you know, when ice hockey, when you throw the puck in the corner, you know, you're not going to, you're not shooting for the goal. So there's no, no. chances going in. You just want to get down there, dig it out and maybe feed some, you know, a teammate. So yeah. that's kind of what I think here. And look, Here's the thing with this. Is it, is, is it a volley? Is it a half volley? It totally depends on your posture and balance when you receive it. Could you volley this? You could. But, boy, that would be tricky. That would be really tricky. And you talk uh, about yeah. pop-up <laughs> sitter. Hmm, thank you very much. So, <laughs> so the half volley is based on posture, based on balance. And then – I just try to I just try to get the racket behind where I think the bounce is going to be pretty early. I think Jeff, you and I see too many players where they're here with the racket head up. And I'm still maybe I'm not 100 percent sure this is going to be a half volley. Maybe I'm still thinking, well, maybe this thing's going to carry a little deeper. Maybe it's going to be a volley. But how often do we see a player keep this racket head up in this position? Right. Knowing it's going to be a half volley and then just kind of hack down into it. Right. Yeah. I, I think, I think the beautiful thing here is obviously you've got a great stable foundation, good posture and 
again, you just you just let the hand square. Uh, there's no manipulation going on with your with your hand arm. You, know, you haven't put all the hinge points in play. Uh, like you said, very simple. You're on your feet, right? Easy move out of the transition. Transition is very smooth because you hit the ball with a really balanced platform, right? That's so right. That means you can you can make the next move then to the next place. You should go stand. And again, make the guy come up with the goods. Right? So yeah, and I don't know. This is what the fourth or fifth point in this series we've seen in the last few days um, yeah. from this. And look, here's the reality. You and I talk about this, Jeff. Ad nauseum. I'm right. Is all you got to do is 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 tell this guy. Okay, I'm, I'm throwing it in over there. I'm going to give you this. I'll yeah. give it to you. I'll give you this little, if you can take that backhand and roll this little bad boy cross court or slide it cross court, or you want to lob, I'll, 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 I'll give you probably about 20% of the court that I just don't, right. I can't <clears throat> cover. And if that one time you hit it and I go, oh God, this doesn't work, Jeff. <clears throat> what am I going to do? <laughs> Oh no. Right, so let's just take this back a little bit and let's talk about the reality of what happens so often when you transition. Boom. Yeah. Just doesn't go over the net. I mean, because in their mind, they feel like I've got 20% of the court I can use, which sounds like a big number. But when the visual of. Right. Going. Somebody standing there, somebody standing there waving their arms. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And and it, it and that's you know part of the it's not a trick. Part of the um foundational truth of serving and volleying, serving and half volleying, the last layer of pressure after you've hit your shot is where you go stand. And are you yeah. committing to the next move, the next place you should go stand? Um, so this is beautiful. Yeah, that's a good return, right? You, At my you feet. lay it down there and you keep coming. Then you, you go ahead and take the next place. That next place that you go stand, he has to deal with it. That is the last layer of pressure after you've hit the ball. There's still one more layer of pressure the player puts on his opponent. And that is where you're going to go stand. Right. Where are you going to go take that next? So what you're saying is what's the right shot? I've been right for 395 episodes. Shot choice. Where do you want it to land over there? And how are you going to enhance that by where you move to next? Jeff, how often do we see players who come in here, hit a great half volley, but wait to see what their perception of the degree of difficulty is going to be? Yeah. How good did I hit it? That there is a measure of that. Right. Let's say you chunk this thing and yeah. it's and it bounces inside the service line and it's kind of hanging up in the air. You might take a step forward, but you might not be quite as aggressive. That's right. Because you're because you're looking to create a little bit of time, a little bit of room for yourself because the guy is going to come up there and maybe powder the ball. Right. He's, he's going to paste it. OK, well, that's a different situation. But this you played it smooth. You hit it where you wanted it to go. It's basically right on the border of the of the outside third of the court, right? Middle third, outside third, right there, right? Take your next move. Go stand up there and make the guy come up with the goods. I think yeah. that's the other side of it is, is that, you know, the, the fact that if you don't take a good aggressive move to the last, the last layer of pressure, which is where should I go stand, and then make the guy have to deal with you. And if he does, great. Yeah. Applaud. Nice, nice passing shot. And then let's see if he can do it again. Because yeah. that time he actually hit the line. So is that his margin today? The line? Because if that's it, I'm coming all day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming all day. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's that's what you know, Tom still when I worked with him, he, he just said, Look, I don't care who the guy is over there. If you keep the all court forcing game pressure on this guy. I don't care how great he is. All the great ones eventually become human. And I'll never forget. I mean, I, when I, you know, been working with Tom for about six months and I was never a top open level player. I was, you know, I don't know, probably triple digits, who knows, but anyway, 
But he just said, kept doing it. And so this one match I played, well, you know, you probably remember Mark Hansel. Yeah. From yeah, South, South Africa. African. South, South African. African. Yeah. Played yeah. for USF. That's right. So I'm playing Mark Hansel and, and, you know, here we are. I just kept coming and coming and coming and just going, all right. And, you know, I was getting past and I probably, you know, maybe it was, I was one and a half. I don't know. I finally just said, screw it. I got five all in the third. You know, and this was a big result for me. I mean, having won oh, a set. Listen, no, was like, listen, he was, he was a top baller. And, and listen, that guy, he could do anything with the ball. I, I and mean, so, he could do anything yeah, with no, the ball. Very, very talented guy. And I just said, well, all right. And I just kept coming. And finally, I, it was like one of these right here where I'm going, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Yeah. Here we go again. And it was like this. And I went, I just thought to myself, God, Mr. Stowe, you're right. And I end up pulling out the match. I end up one at seven, five. It's like the time yeah. far and away. Biggest win for me at that time. Um, yeah, that's huge. <laughs> well, I mean, the guy, you know, he's, he was, you know, he's a, he was a seasoned, seasoned open player. Yeah. You know, top player for USF. Um, that's a, that's a fabulous win, but that's just it. it that's the, I think the most important lesson there is one. Yes. You, you just followed through with what Tom told you, Brenny. Can you just do this? Can you just do it? And then you did it, right? And you don't know when the constant nagging, the constant pressure of putting the guy in that situation is finally going to come to fruition. Right. This is a, I think this is a big hole in players' minds about understanding when you have finally figured out the solution – and the solution has to do with my skill set laid over their skill set. And if you figured out how to use your skill set to come up with the solution, the solution may not finally come to bear until five all in the third. And, and then that's when all of a sudden he hasn't missed that shot all stinking day. And now he dumps it in the net. Yeah. Boom. Now yeah. all of a sudden you're serving for it at, 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 at five, six or six, five, and, or maybe he's serving at five, six, and now he's pissed because he, he, he let that, he, you know, and now, okay, let's just keep going. Yeah. And that's when it comes to fruition. So I think players don't, don't quite get the fact that when you find a solution, again, I've said this a million times, when you find a solution, it doesn't mean one in one. It means on that day, it might be six, five, and six, and 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 the and the plan was exactly right. No, I agree. I agree. Well, you know what we we've always talked about. You know your your plan A is not necessarily serve and volley. Your plan A is more. What is it that this guy doesn't like? Well, what he doesn't like is over the course of that match is you. I love the word you use, nagging. All you're doing yeah. is you're serving a volley, throwing something in there and nagging him. It's just tapping on his forehead. Yeah. For two and, hours. Two yeah. And hours, that's just, and, and you're giving him what he doesn't want. Right. And uh, uh, so anyway, well, guys, listen, hope this has been helpful today. Um, let's get the video to please move along forward and get to, if you like this, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and for sure click that notification bell. And uh, look, guys, if you're open for some one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, both Jeff and I can offer that service to you. Um, and look, what you have to be clear with is just if you really are that kind of player that wants to get better, you know, and you're just, I mean, you're, you're, you're satisfied where you're at right now with your skill level, but you know there's more then you got to be clear on what that skill level is. And then you got to have a really clear vision on where you want to take it. And it could just be that, Hey, I want to be on the court with those guys next, that court next door to me. Simple as that. And uh, so if that's you, I want to help you bridge that gap between where you are now and where you want to go with those guys in that court next to you. Best way to do that is let's start with a free 15 minute video conference call. You can describe to me where, where you're at, where you want to go. And I'll, uh, I'll describe to you how I think I can bridge that gap for you, how I can help you get there. And then you can decide if that's a good fit for you or not. Uh, the best way to do that, Brent at webtennis.com gets the conversation started. Jeff's up there in Napa, California. Uh, so if you're in the Northern California area, 
<clears throat> it would be Jeff at jacklich 365com And um and yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, who you got today? You taking Medvedev or you taking Alcaraz? I think uh, Alcaraz has kind of found his uh, his lane again. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Alcaraz. I think I think he can take advantage with you know he's got such a great dropper from you know just inside the baseline. I think right. with Medvedev going so far back, I think and and he knows that he's got a great sense. He's got such a great court sense of when the player is back. And he just late and it, and it comes out of nowhere, you know, his ability to shift that grip. And when they slow mo it, everybody watch him shift his grip. Um, and they then, did that last night. They showed that in the forehand dropper last night. And I'm just looking yeah. at the grip the whole time. They're just doing it frame by frame. I go, oh, there it goes. There it, there it is. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I'm, I'm leaning toward uh, Alcaraz. Good, good. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out today, Jeff. Um, as always, good stuff from you. Guys, let's get out there. Let's help someone else have a great day. See you again next time.